Hold on, let me intro it real quick <laughs> because I didn't even intro what we're doing. Alright, so we're at the tasting room. Uh, we got four beers in our flights, a bunch of crazy stuff that some of it you can't even buy in stores. So we're gonna review it. Zach Light's uh, starting. And then the rest. So yeah. it won't matter. We'll be in order now. Yeah, but I'll be drinking the milk stout. Cool. Here we go. Let's record. Beer one, summer Saison, which is perfect for a day where it's negative two degrees outside. Summer and winter. It tastes, I mean, it's like Christmas in July, but July and Christmas. It certainly reminds me of summer. What did you start with? Oh, the cloud Dude, The cloud number six. <laughs> it's that beer's pretty, brutal. Pretty hardcore. That beer's brutal. Look how dark this is. You can't even see through it. Syrupy. Going with beer two. This is not out to the public yet. What is what this is, is the, that? This is the milk stout. Oh yeah. So, Tasting room only. Yeah. It smells like Guinness. It's thinner than Guinness. It tastes like a thinner milk stout's alright. So. Yeah. This collab number six is hardcore. I don't know if I can do it anymore. Uh, there is a there's a reindeer made out of made out of a boulevard box. Look at that. That's sick. That is art. Art to the finest degree. Look at that. Even as antlers. Beautiful. Okay, give me, give me that collaboration number six. Are you gonna try this bad boy? This is I've had I've had this. Okay. Oh, it's so brutal. What is this? Like eleven percent? Uh, I don't think it's that one was 11, but it's up there, yeah. You can tell. It's pretty strong. It's like a whiskey. <laughs> it burns when you drink it. It yes. burns. It's... Oh, wow. Yeah. That's... I, uh, when I was in Philadelphia... That was not good. When I was in Philadelphia for the U.S. Open Cup final, after we won, we went to this, like, hole-in-the-wall bar, and they had a beer that was 18%. And it burned like whiskey when you drank it. Dude. And like, my buddy Isaac drank like two of them and he ordered a third and we had to pass the third around <laughs> and finish it. Dang. Yeah, that was, it, it burned like whiskey burn, like more than that. That, that burned a little bit. It was like full blown whiskey. You want to try the milk stuff? Yeah, let me try it's this. It's like a thinner usually, Guinness. Usually, I don't know if I like milk stouts. I like the old dry stout one that Boulevard used to make, which is basically just straight up Guinness. Yeah. That's pretty good. It's just like a milkier, creamier, thinner. Guinness. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I'm gonna try this bourbon quad now. Bourbon quad. This is eleven. This is eleven percent. When we used to do indoor, I almost in spilled it everywhere. <laughs> when we used to do indoor games in Wichita, you could get this in Wichita for like six ninety nine a bottle in January and February. So we just drink whole bottles. It's the big seven fifty milliliter. Yeah. Like smokestack bottle. God, this is good. This yeah. is this on the other hand, that Cloud is Six. If you like syrupy, thick, heavy tasting beers, you probably like that. I don't too much. This is a really good one. Bourbon, bourbon barrel quad. Bourbon barrel quad's a great one. It's a great beer, and you can get it dirt cheap. It, it, it's weird because like all the Boulevard smokestack stuff, like in Kansas City, it sells out. Like if it's if it's like a limited release, like chocolate ale. Every January, February, when it's out, sells out immediately. You go down to Wichita, and you can get it no problem. Yeah. This is all right. I probably wouldn't drink it again. Uh, the next one's going to be weird. So what are you doing after this? Tacos. Tacos at Blue Line? Yeah. I kind of, I'm trying to decide if I want to spend money on tacos at Blue Line. I do. I do want tacos at Blue Line. Right, right. This is like a dollar fifty after three. What time are we trying? Oh, yeah, it's two now. Oh, yeah. We'll be good. We can uh, ride the streetcar down, get some more sweet footage of Snowy. Ugh, no, they closed. The streetcar is closed again. Yeah, it was they riding were, earlier. It was just a test run. They still had the buses on the route. Oh. like you can get on the buses for free and ride it like the streetcar, but it's not the same. Yeah. You're not going to see any hobos drinking whiskey on a, <laughs> on a bus. If you don't know what Zach's talking about, check out my first vlog. There's a guy. I didn't even notice it until after uh, I was editing the footage. He slips out a little flask of whiskey and does a quick little. It wasn't sip. a flask. It was a straight bottle. Or of it was like that flask bottle, a little bottle. It was pretty funny. Next year on the soccer front, what changes? Because like, I mean, I think season ticket renewals are down. I don't know. I'm 
already excited because we get to go. We'll go to Dallas for a game. Yep. And then hit six, six flags. flags. Shout out Austin Honey. <laughs> <laughs> What's up, Dewey? <laughs> uh, Minneapolis. We play in Minneapolis next year. Then we can and go. Mall of America. And that other thing. Paisley Park. Yeah. Oh, yeah. No, there's, no, no. The, the there's, other, yeah uh, there's that. Uh, Cedar what is Fair it? Park, whatever yeah. it is. We can go to that theme park. But the big thing for me if we're playing in Minneapolis is going to Paisley Park. Because it should be open as a museum by then. Oh, right, it, right. Paisley Park is Prince's home. And that's like... Not... Not Brad Paisley's house, it's for Prince. Yeah, for Prince. I don't think you can spend four days in Minneapolis unless there's like a good show. Four days, four days is probably right. A day at the theme park, a day at, whoa, whoa, dude. <laughs> that was a little gnarly. You, you passed me. <laughs> it was a gnarly last drink. But that's one of my favorite beers I've had here, I think. In it's great beer. Yeah, great beer. Something I'll grab every single time I can find a bottle of it. On the streets. <laughs> On the streets. On the streets. So, uh... Okay. Beer three. While we're setting up beer three, make sure to check out the vlog I posted where we come here, because uh, this is obviously a separate video. And check out us freezing to death, shooting a time lapse, all to be artsy for YouTube. <laughs> I decided this is going to be a separate video because we got like ten minutes uh, of footage. Right. What are you drinking? Beer three. This is the new Test Oak Pale Ale, and it's a little bit lighter. Than oh, that's pretty good. Traditional Boulevard Pale. It smells way hoppier than traditional pale. So I'm gonna try to see the reaction here. Yeah, it just it tastes it just tastes like a super hoppier pale ale, but with a little bit of a, a weak kicker at the end. So not a fan. Let me check this bad boy out. Man, you're right. It's like a pale ale that smells like an IPA. Yeah, yeah, it smells like an IPA, but it's not quite as hoppy as an IPA. I'm a fan. <laughs> They need to bottle that and deliver it straight to my house. I, I didn't mind that tropical pale ale that came out this summer. They did a, the collaboration number five last year. Was a was a tropical pale ale that inspired the new tropical pale ale, the, the permanent release. Yeah, which pretty like good. everybody freaks out about ginger lemon radler and cranberry radler. I just don't like fruity beers, but that tropical pale ale is not bad. Half of the flight is gone. We're on the second half here. So I think I'm going to do the uh, Rosemary IPA here. Yeah, we'll save, save the best for last. Yeah. Got to do our snow and tell together. I bet my dad would like this because he likes flowery tasting stuff, but I'm interested to see if I like it. That's so Michael Dane, flowery Man, tasting it stuff. smells like a flower. I'm not into it. Literally I don't smells know. like straight up a flower. I don't even want to try it. Those of you who know me know I love IPAs. It's a little rough. Now I do want to try it. <laughs> say it's rough. No, I don't want to try it. <laughs> it's like I... Mix an IPA with the green stuff on a pizza. The oat pale, after a couple of sips, I actually don't mind. Yeah. After I like that. getting over the initial hoppiness. Sucks that that's a test. They need to go and release that. Fun fact, when I was at the Schlafly tour uh, over the summer, uh, Schlafly sold out of beer, and then they didn't have any beer to keep their restaurant open, so Boulevard sent over pale ale for them to sell. <laughs> and that saved Schlafly. So at Schlafly. So take that, St. Louis. So at Schlafly, you were just drinking Boulevard pales. Well, that was in the 90s. Uh, when they first started. Boulevard saved them. Boulevard's the best, man. It's a good beer. I don't think that there is a beer I enjoy. If we're talking, like, overall, best beer on the planet that you enjoy, that you have had, I don't think there's a beer I enjoy more than Bob's 47. Yeah. Boulevard Oktoberfest. And, I mean, said, like, I freak out every time I go to Florida at the world's greatest bar, Epcot, at Disney World. <laughs> Every time I go there, my two must-haves are Einstock White Ale from Norway and Altmünster Oktoberfest from Germany, like straight from Germany, and they brew it year-round just for Disney. And that's a really good Oktoberfest, but there's something about boulevards. I can't put my foot on it. Um, we have a mutual friend who has an obsession with Sam Adams Oktoberfest. We do. Shout out to DJ Taipan. Shout out. Sam Adams Oktoberfest makes me want to kill myself. It's terrible. It's terrible. I'm sorry, DJ Titan. You know, one of the crazy things, too, I was actually having a conversation with Jeremy about that. Um, like, Jermaine Duclain. Jermaine Duclain, excuse out, me. Shout out, Jermaine Duclain. shout out Jermaine Duclain. I mean, we're talking about our favorite breweries, and I think, in general, Boulevard has the most hits for me. Yeah. Um, it's the one brewery that pretty much everything, I'll give it a chance, and most things I actually end up liking. I don't know if that's because, like, the nostalgic sense of Boulevard, because I always saw it growing up, Dad liked Boulevard a lot, or if it's local or whatnot. 
but it's I think it's really good. And so yeah, the first beer I ever drank was a Boulevard Wheat. Yeah, and I was like 24, 25. And uh, yeah. hashtag straight edge. Hashtag straight edge. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah, 20, Troy Wells, Troy nearly Wells, a quarter like, century of straight edge. Troy Wells just uh, just hands it. He's like, here, man, here, try this. And, and but do you remember when we went to Colorado and uh, we got massively sunburned? Shout out, Letty Light. <laughs> shout out. Yeah, I do yeah. remember. So we got massively great. sunburned. You, you gotta, you gotta tell the story properly. You gotta like start from the beginning. Okay, okay. You want me to start it? Okay, yeah, you can, you can we, start it. We were in a band and we were supposed to go on tour, and uh, like we didn't get like we got like three of the ten days booked. Uh, we had no, we had a show in Goodland, but we had four of the ten days booked. But we couldn't get a show in Colorado, and like two weeks before the tour, bass player quits. Shout out Josh White. <laughs> Um, so uh, we decide to play the Wichita tour kickoff show, which is like with a bunch of hardcore bands. I smashed a guitar that night. I think I smashed uh, uh, Brandon Clark's uh, Brandon little Clark's? Les Paul. Was it Brandon's? Or it might have been Austin Honey's or something. It was, it was that cheap Les, that yeah, like Les, Les Paul Les Jr., Paul. right? Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. I smashed that uh, that night. Uh, and then we like left for Colorado we decided like since the tour was cancelled well remember we were gonna yeah the tour was cancelled so we knew we were gonna go to Colorado yeah so we but then remember we went home and we were like we're gonna sleep and leave at like 6am but right. then when none of us could sleep so we left at 2am yeah we left instead. at 2 in the morning in your <laughs> it's like an 8 hour your drive crown bit, yeah it was you me and Dewey yep shout out Austin Honey yep shout out Austin Honey uh yeah and we went and we drove to Denver and I remember like I made everybody stop in Denver and get Waffle House and then go to Guitar Center and then we drove into Vail and like just sleep dude we were like up for like 36 hours I think because a lot of us worked at like 7am my mom was a concierge at a resort and we went to uh, she got us hooked up to whitewater rafting and we go whitewater rafting and it's like late summer it's like late July I think well no first we took a nap and the, the first day we were there we took a nap and then we all went to the top of Vail Mountain and I remember you and Dewey had beers. Yeah. I was straight edge, so I was pissed that everybody was drinking. Uh, that was cool. It looked really awesome. Yep. Uh, and then the next day we went to Whitewater Rafting, and the rivers were low. It was totally boring. Uh, and at one point, you and I get offered to go in this inflatable, like, canoe the, thing. The ducky. The ducky, as it was called. <laughs> and we were on the ducky, and a raft guide pulls up next to us, and is like, hey, there's a giant rapid ahead. Uh, go to the go left. Go to the left or right. Yeah. Don't go down the middle. I, I'm not an experienced whitewater rafter by any means, but I have done enough times that I know what I'm doing, like, and I, I love the action of it. Right. And so I look at Ryan and I'm just like, oh, we're, we're going down the middle. Turns out... Uh, this is the best... Probably one of the best moments of my life, honestly. It was pretty tur- awesome. Turns out, in the middle of downtown Goodwood Springs, Colorado, where the Colorado River runs through the city along I-70, is the world's largest man-made wave. And so we're getting up, and there's like, then we see this little rapid, and we're like, okay, no big deal, we got this. And we go, and it's like a 15-foot drop straight down. And with just two of us in this little raft. And we rode it. Yeah, we, we were riding the wave. it, like carving the wave, and then uh, people were cheering us people from the bridge. People were cheering us from the, the river. <laughs> I think, I for some reason feel like that with me. I think I was in the back. Yeah. I was like, there's no way we're getting over this. I bail out of the boat. Uh, and the next thing I know, like a raft guide is pulling me out of the water. Yeah, dude. The oh, I remember that because so we like capsized because uh, we we're on the a wave in a freaking inflatable boat. Well, you stayed in the boat, right? Yeah. yeah. But then I remember you were like underwater, and I grabbed your life jacket so you wouldn't float away. I remember you, like upside down and trying to like flip us over. But I got pulled into I got pulled into another boat, and the raft guide was like, I don't know what that was all about, but it was fucking awesome. <laughs> And then we were legends. Yeah. For like the rest of that raft ride. Yeah, and then we were so sunburned. Oh, my God. So apparently, and everyone may know this, even though it's 60 degrees, it means you can get sunburned. I didn't know it at the time. I just had always associated sunburn like with being hot. 75. But yeah, it was so like. You're closer to the sun in the mountain. Yeah, you're like a mile closer almost. So uh, yeah, we got massive sunburns, got like welts and everything. We got some bomb ass pizza. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That we tried to walk to that uh, Dick Sporting Goods to buy girls sports short board. shorts. Sports clothes. Sports clothes, yeah. To buy girls short shorts so that way it wouldn't hit our sunburns on our legs. 
and we couldn't find anything that I didn't fit us. That. And then, that might have been you uh, and Dewey. And then I that sent, wasn't me. And then I sent Dewey across the street to buy me some PBR. And I sat on that balcony in my boxers, drinking PBR in a lawn chair at a fancy Vail resort. It was the best. People in their Mercedes were pulling up in the parking lot underneath. Had to keep and I'm Kansas, out there man. rednecking it. Had to keep Kansas. Kansas. Uh, last beer. Last beer. Uh, what's your oh, most snow and tell? Boulevard snow and tell. I had three of these last night during the UFC. One fights. month only. This thing's fantastic. It is a Scotch barrel aged ale. That's some good stuff, dude. It's perfect for a day like today yeah. where it's like eight degrees out. Wish I would have started this and also only ordered four of these because yeah. this is the best. <laughs> I <of> almost did. <laughs> I asked it, I was like, did I just get four snow, snow and tells? Mm, that is good, dude. It's like a nice smooth beer with like a whiskey aftertaste. Yep. But it doesn't burn. Right. Like, yeah, uh, yeah. Like the collaboration six or the bourbon barrel. Mm-hmm. I guess the bourbon barrel doesn't burn a whole lot. But this is a great, like, typically in the winter, all I want to drink is like Jameson and Makers and whiskey. So, like, if I'm going to have a beer, this is this is the beer you have. Right. And they only put this out last year for the first time. It's fantastic. Uh, anyway, thanks for uh, watching us drink beer and talk about stuff. Uh, Till next time. Peace.